All right, finally, we get to work on the code. So we have our files, we have our tools. We're gonna go into VS Code under Hello World. I'm gonna open index.html. And also let's start Light Server in this folder. Earlier, we started it at the root of this folder. So that means it only works on this index.html file. I'll open up the terminal again. We'll clear this out. CD01, and we'll go into that Hello World folder that we're in right now. And notice I'm under Documents. Batcave is the folder where I keep all of my projects. View Starter Course is this folder, and 01, Hello World. Now that we're finally in this folder, we can hit Light Server, and that will start it up, open it up in our browser automatically, and here we are, ready to work. Now I'm gonna push this to the right, push this one to the left, close the sidebar, spread this out a little bit to the right. Uh, it should be good right there. Close the terminal, hide the activity bar, hide the status bar just to get a little more room. All right, looking clean here. A lot of things moving around. Those were all done with keyboard shortcuts. I highly recommend using keyboard shortcuts for pretty much everything so that you can keep your hands on the keyboard you don't have to go grab the mouse, and that consistently makes me a more efficient developer. Learn the keyboard shortcuts is a great thing to do. So what are we gonna do in this hello world? We're gonna do this two different ways. We're gonna have plain JavaScript, where we write things out in JavaScript, and we're gonna have in Vue, where we show how to do it in Vue. And I like this approach because it shows the difference between doing it in jQuery slash vanilla JavaScript and in Vue, because you'll start to see once we get into larger applications, how Vue really helps organize our code and makes things a little bit more readable, a little bit easier to understand, and a little bit more manageable. For our example, we're gonna do a very simple hello world. We're gonna say h1, and a Bulma class we can use is title. Inside of here, we're gonna say my text goes here. Immediately refresh on the right, very nice. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have an input. Type is text here. Class is input, which is a Bulma class, just to make it not look so boring. And we're gonna have that input. Now what I wanna do is as soon as we start typing into here, we're gonna change what this title says. So we're gonna do it two ways. We're gonna do plain JavaScript and with view. Organize that a little bit. Sorry, I'm a stickler for organization and readable code. All right, first things first, let's do this in JavaScript. I don't even know why I brought in the jQuery tag. We're just gonna do this with plain JavaScript. And I think it's always good to know the JavaScript side of things. We'll say const heading is equal to document.query selector. And we're gonna grab this h1. So now we have a reference to this thing right here. Now we're gonna grab the input because we need both of these things. Const input is equal to document.querySelector input. And I would probably name this name input or something like that just so it doesn't clash with any other variables if we somehow name something else input as well. But while we're here, now that we have these two things, we're gonna listen to the input box for typing. So we're gonna say input.addEventListener. We're gonna use the key up event. So anytime somebody keys up in here, we're gonna listen for it. We're gonna take that event. And then how do we get the value out of this? We're gonna say the event.target.value. And that's gonna say the event, which is the key up event, the target, which is the input box, and the value, which is the value of the input box. And we'll save that to a variable const text is equal to e.target.value. And finally, once we have that text, we can say header.inner text is equal to the text. So now we're setting it to that target.value. All right, let's see if our plain JavaScript works. Typing, and it looks like it's not working. <laughs> looks like I already messed up our hello world example. We'll right click, inspect element, go into the console, on cut reference error, header is not defined. Did I use the wrong variable name? I did. We have header.inner text. We actually have heading 
Type inner text. So we'll save that. Refreshes automatically. And type immediately gets updated. Very nice. So that's how we do all of this in plain JavaScript. And for just kicks and giggles, let's just do this in jQuery as well. So we'll comment all that out up here, jQuery. So jQuery does a good job at simplifying things where we have to grab from the DOM, manipulate the DOM, and stuff like that. And you'll start to see where view comes in handy as we take it a step further past jQuery. So we have plain JavaScript. Our jQuery is going to be that input. We're going to grab it on key up event. And we're going to say grab that h1 dot text e dot target dot value. Save that. And that should work as well. It does. We could even simplify this and do an ES6 implicit return where we do it in one line right here. And that's how we do it in jQuery in one line. Now the problem with this though is we have an input here on key up. We have this targeted h1. What happens if we have more than one input? We add a class to this input so that we'd have to target a specific input. So then we would change this to name input. But maybe we had name input uh, in a couple different places. So now there's multiple places we have to change that input reference. Same goes for that h1. Let's see how we can do this in view. We're going to speed through this in view. And as we go through this course, you'll start to learn all the concepts. But here is a little crash course. To get started with a view application, you will always have a root view instance. And what that means is it's going to be the way we start view. So we're going to say const app is equal to new view. And that's it. We started a view application. This is our view instance. And there's one thing we need in here. We're going to say element. And we're going to give it a selector to attach itself to. Now up here under our view section, let's comment this stuff out. We don't need that anymore. We're going to say ID is equal to app. And that's how view knows, hey, look at this ID of app. And this is where you're going to be working. OK, so view look in here. And everything we do in here is what you should be looking at. Now, the cool thing about view up here, we had to grab our two elements. We had to listen for an event. And then we had to modify our DOM, our actual HTML. Down here, we can, instead of going to grab everything we need, view doesn't have to do that. We bind things in view. So what that means is we're going to create a data object here. We're going to say text is equal to hello world. Save that. Nothing happens just yet. But now, all we have to do to get this data text into our template, into our div right here in our section, we just say double brackets, text. And we immediately have hello world. And now if I put that inside of an h1 class title, we have it data bound immediately. Now this is great because all of our variables are in one location. All of this is happening inside of our view instance right here. Now let's go grab an input and see how quickly we can take this input right here. Now, how do we get this input to immediately change this text? Well, in view, it's really easy. We're going to go on to our input here. v-model is equal to text. Save. And notice it automatically filled it in because text up here is equal to text down here. So as soon as we start typing, we have it data bound. And here you can see immediately we are typing away. And that's kind of the power of view. This is where you really get to see how quickly and easily you can do some things from JavaScript to jQuery to view. And the cool thing is, is yes, maybe the jQuery line was a little bit shorter writing, but I feel like this is far more readable. We have data text. This is the section of our app that is view bound. And everything is data bound to this variable. This input is bound to that variable. This display area is bound to that variable. So now it's very easy to read. And we know that this is coming from our view instance. This is going to bind to that text variable. 
and I know I'm saying this a lot, but I think that view makes this entire setup very simple and very easy to read. So that's our hello world. I hope that wasn't too far into the weeds. I think that's a, a good intro because it's good to see from JavaScript to jQuery to view just how things are working. Now, the cool thing about this is we can even extend this a little bit further. So we have, let's break this out into multiple lines. And I'll say, hi. And we'll say, hi, my name is name. And my message is, and we'll change this to message. We'll change this to message. We'll in, do another one for name. And now, just down here, we have to add a variable for message. Hello world. And this one actually needs to change to name, Chris. And just notice how easily and how quickly we can extend this example. Now, my name is Nick. And my message is hello world. Good night, world. All right. Now, just imagine if we had to do that in JavaScript, we'd need to have another input for the message input. We'd have to actually change this to name input. We'd have to have another one for message input, and then we'd have to do two event listeners. And notice how this example starts to get really tedious when we're working in plain JavaScript. But in view, you just add a new variable and bind it in the view. So that's our hello world example. I hope that was a, a good example on how to get started with Vue and why it's so powerful as far as organization goes and simplicity. Moving forward, let's get into some even better examples and more real world.